seems the item world has just opened up for us. The item world, like I said, is where you improve the stats of your weapons. Um, what we got here is an Imperial Seal. It's a it's a form it's a special kind of equipment that increases all stats. It said the resident level five and up, so that means on the first floor, enemies will be start at level five and get progressively stronger the further down you go. So use that as a basis um, for whether or not it's something you can handle. Like if all your guys are level twenty and you're going to uh, an item where everyone's level five, um, you know, no contest. However, if you're level twenty and it says like the base, the base enemies are like level twenty-five or anything higher, you're gonna have a tough time. You're gonna find enemies are gonna be hard to kill in one shot, and it's they'll be they'll usually be as many as five to ten levels higher than that by the tenth floor. Um, ideally, you want to do the item, um, the items in runs of 10, because every 10th floor there is a boss character, go. just slightly stronger than the average enemy. Um, beating the item, it's called the item general on the on the 10th floor. Beating the item general increases um, the stack growth of your wep of whatever equipment you're in. So Here you I definitely go. want to kill uh, the item boss, uh, the item general if possible. In fact, there's a trick where if you use um, what the th what the item gatekeeper gave this. us was Mr. Gensi's exit. Um, use that item to escape from the item world and to heal up and save, and you can go back into the item on the exact floor you left. And by the way, if you never got the pun, Mr. Gensi, M R Gensi, emergency exit. Pretty clever, right? Emer emergency, emergency ex exit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a trick that many people do is on really important weapons, kill the item general, use against his exit, leave, save, go back in, kill the boss again. You will get another stack. Um, you will increase the stats of the weapon even further very handy and if you want like a perfect weapon of which there are 40 ranks of weapons and 40 is the best you want to double kill the item general on every single floor for a maximum stack growth um weapons uh the amount of floors in each item is dependent on the rarity of the weapon if i don't know if you've noticed yet but most of the weapons so far are just white text. White means the maximum floor is 30. Rare weapons glow blue. The, the text will be a glowing blue. Rare weapons, the bottom floor is, I think, 60? I hardly ever go down in those. And legendary weapons, which are gold and yellow, have a maximum of 100 floors. And the natural stats of them are much higher than normal weapons. So if you see a legendary version of a weapon, it is definitely going to be stronger than the normal version. Like if you know that a silver the silver auto in the in that bonus list, if you notice, was blue, so it was rare. Check the when you're in the item world. Check the equipment of monsters, and check the bonus list frequently to see if there's any goodies you want because usually there will be this is the way to get better gear faster if they have something rare in the bonus gauge you're going to want to try to use the geo panels which is the best way of filling up the bonus gauge and you only get the bonus if you destroy every enemy on the level the fast way is just going into the into the exit gate the red gate Mushrooms. And of course, check the um the, the status of the geo blocks. Um, the, the first time going into a weapon in an item world in the beginning shouldn't be that tough. You shouldn't be managed to be able to get to the tenth floor. But 
item world can become addicting. Sometimes, if you wanted to go another, like, for example, getting to the 10th floor can be done in this, if, if you're smart about it and you have some luck, but if you wanted to get to floor 20, like, immediately afterwards, that's going to cause you some trouble. The enemies are going to be far too tough. But, to fight directly, that is. However, there are ways to um, mitigate risk and just... Um, if you don't care about the bonus gauge, you can still progress levels in just making a mad dash to the exit. You can do this by... By getting lots of shoes in the store, because shoes increase your movement. Slippers, falcon shoes, ninja tabi, cross trainer, stuff like that. What you do is, there's a trick. Take a character out. You can change their equipment. Put all three shoes on them. Move them. And then put their normal equipment back on. It doesn't count as an action. You can change your equipment as many times as you want before the character performs an action. So you can use this trick um, to move a good distance. And then put your tough armor back on so that you don't die. Um, otherwise... A character, you di there are two kinds of characters you definitely want for the item world, and that's either a masked hero or a moth. And the reason you want one of those two is because they have, th they count as flying types. Um, actually, the masked hero might require an ability for that to be the case. Let me double check. But when they're a flying type, they can move through enemy units. Normal units on the ground you know, they're blocked off by enemies, but those guys can go right through. So it makes getting to the exit much easier. Like, you should have a dedicated item world runner. Just make a moth, give him three pairs of shoes, uh, eventually go into the character world, increase his movement, and just have a dedicated item world runner. Like, eventually, with the best uh, shoe equipment, which increases movement by like three each, and if you go into the item world in that, you can increase the movement further. So you can get a moth that can go through enemies and move like 16 spaces in a single turn. It's nuts. Before you even throw him. Makes going through the... Makes doing item runs in very powerful levels much easier. Um, now sometimes there is a gatekeeper. If you notice right now, there is a cat on the gate. That means I cannot um, get into the gate unless I, unless I defeat the cat. However, there is a trick. Um, you cannot lift characters off gates. Uh, the game won't let you. However, if you have a fist user, fist the techniques, um, special techniques, move the enemy. So, depending on the positioning of the gate, you could use something like triple strike and simply attack the enemy off of the gate. The game will allow that. That, that is a way of bypassing um, gatekeepers if you're not strong enough to defeat them. Otherwise, a lot of good magic characters where you're able to attack the enemies from afar, very helpful. Uh, let's see what else. If the enemies turn out to be tough, there are ways to take advantage. Look at the geo panels. For example, look for either invincibility or reverse damage tiles. If either of those exist, position your characters on them and just stay there. The depending on how the spacing of the blocks, the enemy will not be able to kill you um, unless the geo panels move. Some of the geo blocks can move sometimes. Be careful of that. There are monsters underneath the geo blocks, and they can just get up and change on, at every turn. So watch out. But if they don't, um, you can really take advantage and just beat enemies that you are have no business beating yet. Like, you could beat an enemy that's like 30 levels higher than you, or, you know, 10 to 30 levels higher than you, if you're on a reverse damage or invincibility square. Because they just won't be able to do damage to you. In fact, on reverse damage panels, they'll heal you. Um, you might not do much damage, but if you have a ca character that has a high counter rate, every time you counter, you will do more and more damage. And if you look up right there, combo t 4 times plus 30%. If your character doesn't move and stays in the same spot, their damage will go up by 10% every single action they perform in the same spot. So your attacks will be getting progressively stronger and eventually you'll be able to defeat the enemy.
There. Really great trick for leveling up. Uh, for getting the bonus gauge or, you know, getting really a lot, a lot of good money and experience that you should not, you would not be able to get otherwise. So look at the geo panels and take advantage of them. Otherwise, if there are things like Mighty Enemy or where only the enemy is invincible or Enemy Turbo times three where their stats are three times what they normally are, don't, don't bother. Either destroy the combo, either destroy the blocks to give those bonuses right away or just run to the exit. It, it's suicide to try to fight with with such a big handicap. Um, other blocks to look out for are Death Blow. The Death Blow status effect is an enemy victory for me. Um, any character standing on a Death Blow panel, if it gets hit by anything, it will do maximum HP damage and outright kill it. So if there are really strong enemies, but they're on a death blow panel, even a level one character can beat it as long as he hits, and you'll level up like crazy. So look for death blow panels and make sure you never stand on one. Ah, now that yellow one is a mystery gate. Mystery gates take you to a side room where anything can happen. The craziest stuff happens in these mystery gates. Let's see what happens in this one. I don't know who this person is. <laughs> ah, the item fortune teller. That sucks. <laughs> if I cared, I, I would res I would reset the game right now. What he basically did just did was, fortune tellers have a chance of either lowering the effective level of the weapon you're in or increasing it. I got unlucky and he lowered the level. So, say if I got to level 10 and I exited, effectively it would only be level 5. Whereas, I think level 5, possibly level 7. I can't, I'm not sure exactly how many levels he decreases it by. On the other hand, he could grant you like super lucky and increase it as many as 10 levels. So while you could be on the 10th floor, effectively you would have 20 levels of stat boosts. Very handy, right? I got this. So it... If you want a perfect weapon, that's what you have to that's what you have to abuse. You need to find ways to increase the effective level of the weapon, which I believe now goes up to level 300. The effective level used to be 200 and you would raise that by um by getting luck defeating enemies in mystery gates. See, right now I'm using a, a tower trick to just throw my characters to the gate because I don't feel like fighting anybody on this floor. Handy, right? Um, what was I saying? Yes, the effective level can be the maximum is 300 now at this time. If you plan to max that out and you, for example, rank 40 weapons, which, like I said, are the best, get that to level 300, there will be nothing you cannot defeat with that. I got this. Um, you, you're gonna want to perfect those, you, so you need to go into all the mystery Here gates, possibly soft reset, possibly reset the game a lot and get lucky this. with item fortune tellers, pick up what are called level spheres, where, um, I think they show you later, but it's, it's an item where, that appears that if you hold it up, if, if one of your character is holding it, while you defeat the level, either by going into the gate or defeating all the enemies, it will add levels to the... To the item. Right now, the uh, the gatekeeper is explaining in, in the sky of four. I have the options of either going into of choosing which gate to increase the odds of level spheres appearing and ways to increase the level of the item, or innocent or more innocence appearing and ways to boost innocence. Innocence are that yellow neutral monster right there. I think it's a teacher. Teach. What did teachers do? I, th I think teachers increase SP. Basically, innocence in a weapon, in an item, uh, give additional stat boosts, and there are many kinds of status um, of innocence. They do anything from raising every single kind of stat, uh, raising status resistance. Raising the amount of experience you get, raising the amount of hell you get, 
raising the, your efficiency with certain weapons. There's a crazy variety, and certain weapons and equipment benefit from certain um, innocents more than others. What you do is you, if you destroy an innocent, um, an innocent, the the bonus they give doubles, and you can move it from weapon to weapon, uh, from item to item. Here I come. So, for example, if you have a really good sword and you wanted to max out its attack potential, what you would do is you would farm for gladiators. <laughs> and, you know, people are asking me, is this a complicated game? You know, is it too hard? Uh, the basics? Not so much. Mastery and understanding all the intricacies of, of, of damage, there, there, there's so many damage modifiers it, it's insane that that shit takes a lot of research and and mastering a character it's like impossible i got this but people that doesn't stop people from spending hundreds of hours from trying Forgive me. so yeah if you want to make a sword as strong as possible you would go into you would buy weapons that have gladiators in them go into the item world kill them ah uh, mistake eraser that's a new one basically just a missile. Go into the item world, kill it, either exit out or complete the floor, um, leave the item, and then you can transfer it Transfer it into your weapon. And then if you've subdued both of them, you can combine the gladiators together. And I think the max gladiators can go up to 9,999, 9 I believe. And I think... The amount of innocent slots in a weapon is dependent on the rarity. Uh, legendary equipment has, I think, eight slots. So you could theoretically fit eight level 9,999 gladiators into a sword. And all of that would be direct damage boosts. Oh, this one's awesome. Check this out. <laughs> oh, I love it. I've only seen that once, though. That one's really good. So yeah, innocent farming. Another part about this guy of four that will drive you nuts if you care. You obviously, you honestly, you don't have to do it. Um, it's not even really worth doing until the post game. Although, if you just if you go into the armor and you subdue an innocent, don't sell that weapon until you've take move the innocent to another weapon you're using. I mean, there's no, I mean, it's just a waste to sell it. And one more thing about the item world. Not bad. Actually, a few things about the item world. There's so much shit can happen in the item world. It's crazy. Um, mystery gates again hold a wide variety of kind of scenarios, I guess. For example, um, there could be a hospital in there to, f to heal your characters, very handy for difficult levels. There could be monsters you have to fight, and if you defeat them, it will increase the, the levels of their weapon. There could be other fights for treasure chests. There could be free treasure chests. There could be a lady that gives you a free Genzi's exit. There could be shops where you could buy rare equipment. I think there's a music store somewhere. There's a color shop where you can buy different colors for your characters, your generic classes. Um, oh, check this out. Ow. I don't want to think how heavy that <laughs> gargoyle statue is. Um, there's the fortune teller, like I said. Here I come. A whole bunch of weird stuff. Here I come. It's almost always worth it to go into a mystery gate. Yeah. Um, and one other thing that they've introduced in the, since this guy too is pirates. Basically, any floor you're on, you have there is a random chance of pirates attacking you. Basically, they fly in on a ship. They're usually pretty strong, and it's a challenge to defeat them. In the older games, when you beat them, you would get treasure maps, and when you get all here I come. Is it 16? I think I want to say 16 treasure maps. Um, that opens up the land of carnage. Do our best. And the land of carnage is where, uh, basically it's nothing but 
super powerful versions of all the maps you're already in. Just ridiculously hard. Like, enemies are like a hundred times stronger. Seriously. Like, you'll fight them in the thousands, and if you go into the item world in the Land of Carnage, enemies will be in, like, the high thousands. It's ridiculous. You... Like, everything is so strong in that that they are, like, guaranteed to kill you in one hit, no matter what they are, no matter how good your defense is. It's, like, going to happen. Please! Yeah, I was... I was- I wanted to do a test here. I wasn't sure if you defeated all the enemies on a map like this, where there are the two different uh. gates, if it would give you the option of which to go into. Um, so I was- Ah, uh, the reason I attacked her was because she was on a reverse damage space, so free healing. So yeah, I was curious if I killed him, if I got to choose, and the answer, uh, fortunately, is yes. If you kill them, you you still get to choose which um which boost you want, which is very nice. So remember that. Um, let's uh, Land of Carnage pirates. Uh, I have so far, I have fought two sets of pirates. I think I was only able to defeat one of them. No, I defeated both. They were, um they were kind of tough to be honest. Yeah. They have a random chance of appearing, and fortunately, in the older games, you had to wait a turn to see if they were to appear or not. Now, if they're going to appear, they can appear right in the beginning. Very handy if you're actually actively looking for the pirates. However, they did not have treasure maps. Um, I don't know if they did away with treasure maps, or if you have to... I mean, I know there's a land of carnage still. But I don't know if you just have to defeat all the pirates to get there still, or if there's a different, or if it's a different method to getting um, to the land of carnage this time. Yeah. You know, I, I have the guide. Maybe it'll say. Let's see here. Um, the X Dimension, which is harder versions of, you know, the same layouts, but, ah, that's the level sphere. Pick that up, finish the map, and you will get a bonus, le bonus levels. Let's see. The X Dimension you get to by buying tickets from a get from somebody in a mystery gate and they cost like a hundred mil a few hundred million hell each and there's as many of them as there are levels so <laughs> not anytime soon am I going to be able to afford that like I was way off time to bust some balls bust some balls forgive me let's see here land of carnage the land of carnage is a place where the toughest enemies and the best items are found. You can, you can get amazing gear even in the even you. in the item world from the Land of Carnage, but that's nothing compared to the spoils from reverse pirating out there. I'll get into that later. This is truly the creme de la creme of endgame content, but how do you get there? The Land of Carnage is a copy of the regular base where you run your missions. All the basics are there, though the world is staffed with different NPCs. To reach the Land of Carnage, you need to build a ship capable of flying between the worlds. Oh, really? Your party must have cleared 40% of the X Dimension maps to pull this off. Uh, so I need to get the X Dimension maps first. But you also need all of the ship's pieces. There are six pieces that you need to collect. Five of them aren't too difficult to uncover. They're not fast or easy, but you have a moderate chance of picking them up without trying again and again. Oh, check this out. This is a giant dragon. Uh, you know, the f a fused monster blocking the... Uh, a legendary chest. Here's the... Uh, he's level 20. I'm looking at his stats. And I, a few of my characters are weak and have died. I'm, I'm seriously debating whether or not it's worth it to try to beat this guy. 
Oh, and here's a little trick. If you talk to them facing away from your Geo panel, they will keep facing that way, and you will get the benefit of attacking them from the back, where you have at least an 80% uh, chance of hitting them. Your accuracy will be at least that good. So always, if you're going to fight somebody, always talk to them from behind so that you have the accuracy advantage. Nice little trick, right? Um, so yeah, Feyror is dead, Nehru is weak. Uh, honestly, I, I didn't feel like risking it. I, I was highly down it. Alright, let's see. Uh, you get these by putting down the Discipline Room evil symbol. Oh good, I did that recently. Then go out and capture Pacific types of NPCs from the Normal Dimension and X Dimension. Here's a list of desirable NPCs. Weird. Wow, this is convoluted. Okay, NPC with information you need. Oh, you... <laughs> so when you discipline creatures you capture, that you extort information. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's funny. Okay. Uh, a Rifle Demon from the Normal Dimension 9-6. Thanatos from X Dimension 7-3. Prinny from X Dimension 7-6. Magic Knight from X Dimension Final Episode 1. And a Professor from X Dimension Final Episode 1. Grab each enemy when you find them, throw the targets into your base panel to capture them, and then visit the Discipline Room next time you're back at your headquarters. Save first, and then get them to reveal treasure locations. If there are any problems, reload and try again. You need the chests to appear in X Dimension maps. Wow. Crazy. How do you figure that out without a guide? You, you just have to be extremely lucky. Because if you want to do everything in this game, you need the Land of Carnage. So I guess that means pirates are just for challenge and trophies. Okay, let's see. Once a treasure is revealed, go out and search for it. The chests need to be in the X dimension, and they'll have a fair chance of having the, the parts you need. That's still not the end of the process. The final piece, the body, is still hidden somewhere this. very safe. There are pirates holding onto it, and they're extremely hard to find. Legendary items are your only chance of finding these pirates. Ah, uh, so some pirates... Ha okay, so pirates have certain pirate Here pieces. Yes, and you can make your own pirate ship. <laughs> uh, legendary items are... Yeah. They appear after floor 90 in item world of these items. So save when you beat the last item king, and then repeatedly clear levels between floor 91 and 99. Reset if you don't find it. If you don't meet the cat pirates, reload and keep trying. This can take a long time. Brace yourself. They only appear on floors 91 to 99. Defeating the pirates gets you the body of the ship, completing your quest to reach the land of carnage. Once assembled, the ship will stay in your base and be available when you want. Get all that? So basically, capture very specific enemies apparently from normal levels and the dimension levels. Pass the bill in the senate to get the discipline ability. Capture enemies into your base panel, then go discipline them and, ex and make them tell you where the specific parts are. After you do that, go get them, and then go into a legendary weapon up to 490, which you're not going to be able to do until, unless your characters are like in the, the hundreds, possibly even the thousands, unless you go into a very weak weapon. Remember, you can still go into a legendary weak, um, like a legendary Imperial Seer or Common Sword, and the enemies on the 90th floor will be much, much easier than in, say, you know, uh, a universal orb or a trapezohedron. Wow, that is crazy. Good to know, though, right? If you were planning on doing this yourself, that's information you need to know. So I guess your priority, after you power level, is just start going into... Uh, the strongest weapons you can. Make enough money to buy Dimension X maps. Complete enough Dimension X maps and keep capture these specific creatures. I don't know if you can capture other ones and it still works. Extort them. Get their ship parts. And then fly yourself over there. 
good luck with that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's the item world, and that's a lot of the advanced stages in the game. Um, wow. Man, I, I, I've, I've barely been paying attention to <laughs> what I'm actually doing in the game. I've been talking about the game itself, but not what I'm doing. Uh, I don't even know what floor this is. Um, I think it's floor 9. Yeah. Uh, remember, going in the mystery gates and coming back out, yeah. you, you're on the same uh, level you were in the first place. It doesn't count as advancing a floor. Um, ooh, let's see, that was a legendary gun, the legendary rapid fire. I could theoretically go down the floor 90 of that to, fi to find those pirates that have that piece I need. Although, I don't even know if they give it to me because I don't have the ability to make... Oh, as soon as you fight a pirate, you'll have the option in the Senate to pass a bill to make your own pirate ship. That's how you do that. Um, yeah, if you, if you notice, that's the encroach ability where uh, the encroach block is on the aqua, so every turn more aqua blocks will appear with that effect. No, I'm sorry, it's super expansion. Similar to Encroach. I think the difference is... I'll teach you I, think the, I think the specific difference is that they spread out towards your characters, as opposed to Encroach, which just... I don't, I, I'm not really sure of the difference, really. Okay, no, so I guess this is floor 9. Nearing the end. So yeah, um... If you're going to go into the item world a lot, if you want to make it faster, you can turn off the enemy effects. The enemy and your effects, especially if you've seen them a lot. I like to keep the enemy effects on just in case they do stuff that I've never seen before. Because a lot of the web, uh, the monsters will be stronger than the ones you fight in the story, and they'll often have new stuff. Um, and believe it or not, there is a trophy for watching every special attack in the game. It's going to take a long time to do, but, you know, that's kind of nice. So, actually, when you fight bosses, um, bosses that had their own special attacks, make sure you see them. Make sure you make them do it. If you want that trophy, if you care about trophies. Please. Oh, here's something else, a, a trick I forgot to mention. If you got a really good equipment in the item world, like if I wanted to use that gun, but it went to the warehouse because your item stock is full, go into a mystery gate. It counts as being in the hub world and you have access to your warehouse there. You can change your equipment within the warehouse while you, when you're in a mystery gate, if you're not in battle. So remember that if there are important items you want to use. And always make sure you have one Gensi's exit in your in your item slot, not in your warehouse. Okay, this is stage nine. <laughs> the last one was stage eight. See, ah, uh, Aqua Panel, mighty enemy. Don't, 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 don't attack them. You won't do any damage. Silence. Uh, means you can't use any special attacks if you're on that panel. I can't remember if I... See, look, the enemies are level 9 now. That mushroom's level 9. They started out at level 5, but, you know, like I said, they're getting stronger as they go down. Time to bust some balls! Ah, attack plus 1, one of my favorites. 1, 2... Ugh, so close. Forgive me. Here I come. <laughs> so weak. I really thought that would do it. And she didn't combo with Fenric either. Here I come. Ghosts and mages are so frail. Um, they almost always go down in a single hit. Gargoyles, slimes, and skeletal dragons 
however, are another story. Those guys are bitches to take down. And here I get... I tried to just take advantage of the panels, get some easy attacks, get some easy experience. But I'm sick of it, and I'm going for the gate. And now finally, you will see a item general. That's him. Nice new music, right? So, um... Yeah, every 10 floors basically has this pyramid-type structure. Every um, 10 floors, the first item in the bonus list will always be a Mr. Gensi's exit. That's how you get more of those. So, if possible, like I said, destroy the item I'll boss, destroy it um, for the bonus, Gensi out, do it again if you want the double bonus, and make sure you kill every enemy on the floor to get... Make sure you kill every enemy on the floor to uh, to get the, the bonus and get the Gensi's exit. Now, again, there's a trick. If you really want... Ugh, sorry. <sighs> Excuse me. If you're... If you really um, want to beat the general twice, but you're too weak... Yeah, I, I didn't bother. <laughs> I just wanted to get out of here. So, okay, yeah. Um, every 10 floors, there's a chance of Innocent Town appearing. Innocent Town, you can heal. And there's a chance of the Senate. This is the Item World Senate. Go into the Senate, and you can do a lot of things to strengthen the item you're in. For example, you can increase the Follow growth me, rate everyone. of a certain stat. Like, you can get more intelligence, more speed, more hit, stuff like that. Um, you can change the item's name, if you really feel like it. Um, you can increase... Delete ups, Unsubdued Innocent. Uh, that can be pretty handy. Um, and the other weapons you can increase, you can increase movement rate, critical hit rate, uh, jumping distance, uh, counter increase. You can do, you can do all that too. Um, I didn't have much mana, and the chance of it passing wasn't that great, so I didn't bother. Three. See, I picked up a level sphere, so while I'm on level. 10, the effective level is 15. And look at those stats. Don't those look nice? 